Hi, I'm Andrew. And I'm Dave, and we're the IB English Guys. Today, we're, this is our second video talking about artificial intelligence and how it can help with our reading comprehension. We think these videos will really help teachers and students leverage artificial intelligence, and this guy is really an expert. Uh, last video, folks, we looked at active reading strategies and ways that artificial intelligence can be your personalized learning assistant. It can help you with that active reading process. Today, we wanna to look at post-reading. So we're assuming that the student has gone home, they've completed their reading, uh, and now they wanna do some deep thinking before they go to class the next day. Yeah, I just wanna reemphasize what we said last time. This is not a substitute for reading. We have to do the deep reading. We have to ask the questions like we showed in our last video, but now we're gonna actually engage with with the bot and have the bot engage with us and ask us questions. That's this right. is a great dialogue. It's a great dialogue. You know, when you see a movie or you, you read a book, sometimes you want to talk about it. And this is your opportunity to talk about it with a, your personal learning assistant. Mr. Jaws, please read the prompt that we use with our students. Okay, we like to teach prompts and show kids prompts because this helps direct the bot. I'm an IB English student. I just read the prologue in episode one of Antigone for homework. I would like to have an academic conversation that helps me understand the key elements of these sections. My teacher asks that the conversation lasts 15 minutes and provides comprehensive, comprehensive coverage of the content and form of the text. Please begin. Wow, that's meaty. It is meaty, Mr. Jollis. Some things I noticed here, once again, we're identifying ourselves as an IB English student, very important, so the bot can adjust the input accordingly. Uh, we've told the bot what we've read, prologue episode one. We're telling the computer that we want to have an academic conversation. So that gives the computer some insight into the tone and the formality of what we want to engage in. Uh, by talking about the 15 minutes, we understand that we want it to be fairly comprehensive but not take a long time. And we want to talk about both the content and the form. Why is that so important, Mr. Jaws, to mention those two aspects? Uh, the content is, again, the, the, the text itself and, and the ideas of the text and the themes and characters, but the form is how it's written. Again, the language and all the dramatic conventions that are in that text. Now, if we look at the actual instructions that we've given the student, you'll notice that we asked the students to target the following elements. Reading comprehension, character development, themes, dramatic elements, and the structure of the play, Mr. Giles. Why is that so important for us? Oh, we're, we're, we, we want to tell the student to think about all of those things as we're, as we're engaging with the text. So it, it again, gives the student some ideas of what they need to, how they need to engage with the bot, but also we're directing the bot very specifically with our prompt. Yeah, let's take a look at this specific use case and see what happened. Uh, we can see here that the computer asked the question, what motivates Antigone to decide to bury her brother Polynices despite the king's edict against it? What are her reasons and how do they contrast with her sister Ismene's perspective? Take your time, feel free to share their thoughts. Mr. Jaws, I noticed the student gave a pretty brief answer. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Is that typical? That is typical. I think the students is giving their best effort. They're 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 you know thinking about why why Antigone is, is motivated by that. There's more layers that the student probably needed to talk about. But that's that's again the the point of this is that the bot's asking a very rich question. That question's great. The question in itself is engaging my mind. But we see the student making that effort. It's what the student writes here that's the most important to me. That's right. The student has to do their own thinking first. Then the bot can then fill in the missing pieces of what the student didn't have or where the student was stuck. Very, very important. Let's yeah. look at the second example, Mr. Giles. Uh, and I noticed that after uh, some text, I see the phrase, sorry, I'm stuck. What do you think has happened here? This is something we see often when students are battling with hard questions. Yeah, well, the student is trying to answer the question about like Creon's fate and Antigone and what's happening and her tone. And, and then the, the student just sort of it didn't, didn't know how to, how to continue. And that being stuck is a part of this whole engagement with AI. It's like to get unstuck. That's right. You can go from being stuck to unstuck. So as you can see, the student can proceed with the 15-minute conversation and reach incredible depths. But ah, uh, Mr. Giles, that's not the most important part of this process. What do we believe is the most important part of this process? Reflection. Let's talk about that. Why is reflection so important, Mr. Giles? I know that teachers like to hammer that home. Like, we need to reflect. We need to step back when we're done with that process and done with that conversation. And remember, that conversation is, is there for us. We can screenshot it. We can look at it. We can read it over. It's pretty rich. But we've got to step back and think about, well, what have I learned? What is like the most important takeaway for me? What, what, what would I do differently next time? How, what, what connections am I making? That, all that is engaging yeah. my brain, not the computer. No. But if we don't reflect, then I feel like 
that we're missing that key yeah, piece. It's that key metacognitive piece that's going to propel the student forward and have them in a much more advantageous position next time they engage in such a task, okay? Uh, last thing I want to mention, folks, is if the student does this, completes the reflection, the teacher goes through the reflection, Mr. Giles, what do you anticipate the next class face-to-face -face with peers is going to look like? Oh, it's going to be incredible. The student's going to walk in with all these rich ideas about the burial, about the, the brothers and the relationship and Creon being stuck. The process of being stuck and getting unstuck is where the things are actually going to stick in their brains. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think that that's the process so that you've had this active experience at home and you've done some thinking. Then when you come to class, you can actually have some conversations with people. That's what you're in school for. You're in school to like actively learn and think. That's you right. want to remember this computer is not a substitute for our brains. It's, but we can leverage it to engage our brains in a really powerful way. Really well said, Mr. Zha. So teachers, consider using artificial intelligence to allow your students to hit knowledge and comprehension on their own. That gives you the power and the freedom to chase after application, synthesis, analysis, evaluation, the whole works. We hope you enjoyed this video. We hope it gave you some value and gave you lots of ideas of how to leverage AI in your classroom. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye guys.